Hi, I'm Jesse. I'm a cannabis nurse and the founder of Marijuana Mommy, and you're watching Patients Are the Proof, where we talk about the real benefits of cannabis. Today, I'm chatting with Jeremy Jacobs. Jeremy proudly serves as the chairman of Enlighten, where he manages a team with a collective 20 years of experience serving Fortune 500 companies, first-class retailers, and top-end brands all over the world. He brings cutting-edge retail technology to the cannabis industry. With an education-forward approach, Jeremy and the Enlightened team help their partners grow their brand and build their relationships with their customers through a variety of solutions. Its technology solutions are intended to increase revenue and awareness and keep customers engaged. Jeremy is an avid music lover, cannabis enthusiast, marketer, technologist, entrepreneur, investor, native Kentuckian, and former executive director of Kentucky Normal. Hello, Jeremy. Hi, right, good morning, Jesse. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Excellent. Glad to see you this morning. Uh, I'm so happy to have you come on. So thank you so much for your time. And I, I love what you guys are doing. You guys, um, you're in so many different dispensaries and retail locations. And, you know, you're really working to solve two major issues that the cannabis industry faces, advertising and education, um, which are just two remarkably huge issues that so many of us are you know, encountering. I'd love to hear a little bit about your background, how you got started, what brought you into the cannabis industry, because Kentucky yeah. is, is a, a <laughs> tough state to be operating out of. Yeah, it, is. It, it is, Kentucky's an interesting state. We produce about $5.4 billion worth of cannabis a year, but yet, we're one of the last remaining 15 states that haven't legalized. So obviously I get that question a lot or how are you in Kentucky and operating a cannabis business? So sure, it's an interesting story. And it kind of starts, uh, I've been in the digital signage, digital menu and interactive kiosk business for about a decade. And we had a rep in Denver, Colorado about five and a half years ago, whenever Colorado decided to take the leap and open up recreational cannabis as the first state. And he calls me on the phone, his name's Ted, and he calls me on the phone and he says, how would you like to build cannabis digital menus? And so I, I can't explain how excited I was because that was the first time I really got to leverage A, which was what I like to do for business, which is build digital products, and B, the advocacy that I've always felt in cannabis. And so it was kind of a marriage of those two things. And, and that's really where it started was five and a half years ago. And by the time the first day of January rolled around and cannabis was legal, uh, we had about 10 customers. So that's, that's awesome. where we got started. Very cool. So did you have a background in cannabis before that, or did you uh, join Normal <laughs> after you became more involved in the industry? Well, I had a background in cannabis before that, probably not, not an advocacy kind of a background, the same background I think we've all had with cannabis. Uh, but yeah, Kentucky Normal was after that. It was, it was once I saw there was a legitimate fight, uh, once the country started to change the tide, and, and it, it appeared that the efforts of those before me were starting to bear fruit uh, is when I realized that I could actually have a say in that. I feel like there's a lot of people that came before me and before you that, that you know, felt like that was an uphill battle. But as soon as Colorado rolled and then Washington and Oregon and you start to see these dominoes begin to fall, I got involved in Kentucky Normal about two years ago or so, three years, something like that. Excellent. You guys have a, a lot going on out there. I know you guys are fighting for medical marijuana legalization still. Yeah. We are. It's been a really big uphill battle. Uh, it, it, it doesn't seem to matter to a certain group of people how many sick kids we show, how many, you know, vets that have suicidal issues. It, it's just a really big challenge, uh, which I'm sure other states have felt that same sort of challenge. So we're, we're not alone in that. It, it's been a battle for everyone. Sure. So tell me a little bit about your network that you guys have going on. So tell me, uh, tell everybody at home a little yeah, bit sure. about exactly what Enlighten is. So Enlighten is the largest retail technology company in the cannabis space. Uh, where a lot of companies in cannabis started off really as cannabis companies and a bunch of people that are passionate about cannabis said, oh, it would be really great if we did this. And so they've gone out and learned how to do a thing. So they were cannabis enthusiasts before they were technologists, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. We're a technology company first and a cannabis company second. So we've been doing this now for, for 10 years, just like you'd read in the intro there. Uh, they've been doing this a long time. Uh, we're just some of the very bravest people in the technology space to, to be some of the pioneers to come over into cannabis. 
Uh, what we do for the cannabis industry, our biggest product is Enlightened TV. It's in roughly 850 cannabis dispensaries across uh, 30-something states and three different countries. It's an education network, so while you're standing in line or while you're browsing around the store in multiple cannabis dispensaries, you're able to look up and learn what is a terpene, what is CBD, what is THC, what's the difference between hemp and marijuana. Just a lot of these really interesting questions when here's a plant that hadn't been able to be researched for 100 years, and so there's just a lot of questions. We know there's a lot of people standing in those dispensaries with a lot of those questions. And so we go out, we dig up the research, we try to vet it as best we can. We meet with people like you, scientists, enthusiasts, advocates, and try to put together the best educational materials. And we display that like a television network inside of marijuana dispensaries. We also uh, produce a lot of the digital menus that you see. If you stood in line, looked at a menu, if you've ever ordered on a touch screen and then your order was delivered to a window, those self-service kiosks. Just any type of screen or retail-based technologies that you might have used in a cannabis dispensary, there's a pretty big chance we built those if you've been in a dispensary. Very cool. Now, it, did you guys get into this? Like, did you come in to educate or like it, you came in as a sign company, right? Or as like building the digital menus? Yeah, so it's a great question. So we've become, you know, people know Enlighten at this point as one of the strongest educational resources and, and certainly for sure as one of the biggest educational resources at point of purchase. I think we comprise about 70 something percent, 80 percent of all the screens inside of dispensaries displaying content. And so people know us for that, but that's not actually where we started. Uh, it was as simple as, you know, I got that call from Teddy said, what do you think about making a menu? And, I, you know, it, with marijuana buds instead of chicken sandwiches on it, <laughs> which we have been doing for 10 years. And I said, that sounds interesting. And so in the beginning, quite honestly, Jesse, the, the interesting part was at the time, the cannabis consumer was a very different consumer. There weren't a lot of 40-year-old soccer moms or grandmas or papas. The, the primary demographic was a mid-20s male, uh, at least where those were the only people that would come out of the shadows and didn't really care who knew they were mm -hmm. consuming. And so at the time, we felt like the, the network was going to be very lifestyle driven. Uh, we felt like a lot of concert videos, a lot of flashy lights, and, you know, it would be all about news and all about the progression of legalization. And very quickly, we found out we were wrong. We were wrong about who the demographic was going to be. It began to evolve. And we were wrong about what those people were looking for. And so very quickly, we saw education is what they wanted. We saw the need for education. Again, you know, when a, when a plan is under prohibition, you're not legally allowed to research it. So whatever information there was, everybody's trying to get that information out. And so we saw there was a much bigger need for education than, than there ever would be to, you know, put out neat videos with concerts and things of that nature. So that's, that's where we headed. That's true. I mean, that's, it's amazing how, like you mentioned, the point of sale. And, you know, a lot of times you just have the butt tenders. And sometimes you have amazing butt tenders who are very well educated about the plant and, you know, the therapeutic, um, you know, conditions that come with it. But a lot of times right. people have no idea. So it's amazing that your product is there and can educate so many right, right when they need it the most or let them know right. that the education is out there. Yeah, and that's what we try to do. And you hit on an interesting point when you talk about bud tenders. Uh, you know, some of them are educated. Uh, and so I've been in probably roughly a thousand cannabis dispensaries in the last five years or so. And what I would tell you is not very many of them are educated percentage wise. I think there's a lot of them, but on a, as a percentage whole, uh, it's, it's not a very big number. And so th there's a lot of turnover in that business. Uh, there's a lot of lack of interest in that you know, in the education, a lot of dispensaries because they go through a lot of volume. And so it is a it is a great place to be able to educate customers knowing that there's a lack of that. But we've also made new products with our educational materials that actually help bud tenders. We've got a new product called On Demand, and it puts the power in the bud tender's hand. They can just use a tablet. It's got buttons on it like a remote control. So as they ask the customer, what are you here to learn about today? And the customer says, concentrates. They can hit a button on their tablet and it instantly plays videos on the screen behind them about these are the types of concentrates, these are how they're made, wow. this is how you consume them. And so it allows us to take a, an undereducated individual that's maybe new to the business that hadn't had time to learn 
And now they have all these educational resources that normally would have just played in a loop. They now have them on demand and they can cue them at as the consumer is interested in learning about them. That's really cool. So we're trying to do a lot with, with the resources that we've got and figure out different mediums and different ways to make them useful and available to people. Oh, that's amazing. That's, I mean, that's so desperately needed um, overall. So where do you guys see Enlighten going? Obviously, the, the market's expanding. I mean, you probably are set for remarkable growth. Yeah, so we, right now we're, we're doing a lot of international expansion right now. Uh, we, we pretty much dominated the United States. Uh, we started to make a big step into Canada. We're in Jamaica. Interesting fact about that. They're not dispensaries in Jamaica. They refer to them as herb houses. It's so cool. I found that interesting. <laughs> it's, very, it's, it's neat. It is neat to see the different cultures and the, and the different vernacular that's used. Uh, so, you know, one thing is to continue that expansion because it's just not United States consumers that need this education. That would be very short sighted for us to, to think that. Uh, so number one is that international expansion. But number two is like I was just talking about with our on-demand product. What are other ways that we can take and expand the usage of this content? So that's a big area that we're trying to grow in. And, and really thirdly is where can we find more and better vetted content? Because now it is five and a half years after Colorado legalized recreational cannabis. There is a tremendous amount of new research. You know, how is it we get the word out to all of these places that are conducting that research that we are a good, you know, megaphone, if you will, to broadcast that information. And so just finding better sources of information, finding different ways to get that information out, and then getting into other countries to reach more people with that information. I'd say those are our three biggest categories of, of growth as far as education is concerned. Wow, that's, that's very, very cool. I love what you guys are doing. Um, we love what you're doing. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that, I mean, that's, that ties right in with what I'm doing. Education is exactly what people need. You know, it's amazing how many people come to this plant. Um, they hear about it. They hear about the benefits. They hear about sure. the possibilities. And they go and they try, like, you know, one tincture or, you know, a puff of something. And then it doesn't work for them. So they give up and they abandon it. And it's so sad because with a little bit of education – they could learn that it's individualized and that there are other options out there or, you know, different cultivars that might help them or different methods Absolutely. of consumption. Yeah. So it's, it's so, so important. I, I push that all the time with, you know, providers and with bud tenders that, you know, people really, really need that knowledge. They really desperately need it. No, I totally agree. Uh, there's a lot of people that I know of that have tried edibles as their first way to consume uh, most research indicates that edibles are at least twice, three times as strong as consumption through inhalation, whether it's through vapor or smoking. Uh, the, the, the cannabinoids just get processed better through your digestive system. Uh, so you end up getting higher, if you will. So there's a lot of people that I know of, Jesse, that have tried cannabis for the first time as an edible and have been shy the second time. And you're exactly right. Had they known that, you know, if they're coming in for stress, they don't need to be looking at edibles. Vape is one of the more common or tinctures that are very controlled. And so you're exactly right. There's just a lack of education uh, on the part of on the part of these first time consumers are really the people that we're after. I think anybody that's consumed multiple times has figured, you know, at least started to figure out who they are and what's best for them. But it's the first time consumers we stay most concerned about. You're exactly right. That's great. And, you know, that's true, too. And the edibles last so much longer, too. Uh, they do. Yes, I, we... uh, funny story. I had some homemade edibles once upon a time. And, and uh, you know, it was, you, you hear those funny videos of people calling the cops and they think that they're dying, which no one's ever died from cannabis. I, I, I didn't feel like I was dying, but I definitely wished I wasn't high anymore. <laughs> that's for sure. You know, so CBD I, can help that I'm, sometimes for, for some people. CBD can kind of balance out the uh, the anxiety that can be induced by THC. I always encourage people to keep uh, TH, like CBD spray or a liposome product so that they can, or even a vape, vape, vapeable uh, CBD because that can help bring somebody down from that edge because it can be really, really scary. And I say the same thing, like, too much cannabis will never kill you, but it could make you feel like you're dying for a little bit, a little sure. bit of a while. So, ab ab absolutely, no, but no one's ever got hurt from that. You just need some Cheetos and play some Call of Duty, I guess. <laughs> Sleep, a little nap. <laughs> there you go. 
Do you get Absolutely. much pushback there in Kentucky? Uh, well, uh, so Kentucky's an interesting state. We're actually probably more proactively involved in the legislation of hemp than any other state in the country. That started in 2014 with a modification to the Farm Bill, uh, it, which started state programs to study hemp. In 2018, uh, last year, hemp was basically made legal across 50 states unless those states choose state rights to, to make it illegal. And so the state has been very focused on hemp. I believe because of that political climate, and I don't think I'm alone as far as advocacy is concerned, uh, there's a lot of pushback on marijuana becoming legal because Kentucky wants to become the hemp state, or at least according to a couple legislators they do. Uh, so cannabis legislation is kind of shoved to the back. Um, as far as pushback of people within the state, I think we have just as strong an advocacy group as anyone. Uh, there's a lot of people here that fight really hard. They've been fighting for a long time. Uh, there's some notable legendary people here. Uh, but, you know, as far as legislative, I think it's a, it's, there's still a big struggle ahead of us. We, we've got it to where it's going to the legislature. It's going to be looked at and voted on. Uh, you know, there's a little bit of promise there, but there's still a lot of work to be done. Wow. Now, how about advertising? Do you, so when New Jersey first legalized medical marijuana, there were really, really tight rules about what they were allowed to say. They weren't allowed to do any sure. advertising. They weren't even allowed to publish prices. Um, now, that's True. pulled back a lot, and it's starting to change here. But do, do you run into things like that in other states or other countries? Do they have limitations on what you, you are allowed to put out there? So that's probably the biggest challenge that we see and we face on a regular basis is that exact question, what do you see from state to state? And since this is not a federally legalized material, it's state by state with states' rights, every state we go to has a different set of rules and a different, you know, different code you have to follow. And I'll give you a few examples, uh, which are both education and advertising-based examples here. Uh, in Ohio, for example, you cannot display in any advertising at all whatsoever, even if it's in the dispensary, a picture of the product. For what reason, I have no idea why that is. It's kind of hard to advertise a product that you can't show. Uh, but, you know, you can hold it in your hand while you're in the dispensary. You just can't have a picture of it next to it for whatever reason. Uh, that makes things challenging. From an education perspective, uh, I'll show you how far one side to the other it varies in the country. Uh, in Pennsylvania, you're only allowed to show things on the screen that are that are medically based, that are scientifically based, and essentially are recommendations. These are medical, this is medically driven content. But you go to Alaska, for example, and that's the one thing you're not allowed to show wow. on the screen under any circumstances is any type of medically driven recommendation, uh, because they say there are no such things as medical recommendations there. And so we have to keep track of all of that, which gets a little hairy at times to know what content can go on screens. And in certain states, you can't show flour in advertisements. You can't show people consuming by smoking or vaping. So every state is different. And it, it's a lot to keep track of. It really is. Wow. So is it like every state has individualized uh, selection of content that they can choose from to put up on their screens? So the way we manage that is we take all of these different possibilities of rules like can and can't show smoking, can and can't show flour, can show medical recommendations, can't show medical recommendations, and all of that is programmed to our computer system so we know what screens can accept what type of media, and then each piece of content will have tags. Does it have a flour in it or not? Does it show people smoking? Is there a medical recommendation made in this piece of content? And then the system knows what content can go up on which individual screens based oh. on state or independent dispensaries needs or wants, whatever those things are. Wow, very cool. And it's so important to have, you know, a team that understands all of that. That's pretty remarkable because it gets so complex. That's bonkers. It gets, it gets a little crazy. It's probably the most frustrating thing that we deal with. Uh, people talk about how their biggest interest in legalized cannabis throughout the country is going to be in the banking system. I don't disagree with that. That's going to help clean things up. I've seen too many vaults with millions of dollars in cash because mm -hmm. they don't have anywhere safe. To, it's crazy, mm -hmm. but they don't have anywhere safe to put it. But for me, you know, the biggest challenge 
so far and what will continue to be the biggest challenge is the variances until it's federally legal, the variances from state to state. And I'm not sure with federal legalization that'll that'll discontinue. I think the states will still get to continue to make their own set of rules. I agree. I think we, that's... Don't, we don't see it changing for any time soon. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Um, so now when people are just starting out, what, at what point do you guys get involved? Is it when they start planning their dispensary after they build it? When do they reach out to Enlighten to, to find out about your services? It's different for different people. A lot of dispensaries already know about us. You know, we, we almost had a thousand uh, customers. Your name is out there. And so people know who you are. Uh, but there are a lot of dispensaries, especially the larger chains. Uh, they were kind of shy to come around in the beginning. They wanted to produce their own content. They've now been years in the business and saw how hard that is to update that on a regular basis and do what we do, putting out fresh content every two week or every week. Uh, so they saw how challenging that is. And uh, so they come to us later in a life so cycle. It just really depends on dispensary. But some, it's, it's very early on. Uh, for others, it's later once they kind of say, hey, we need some help with this content stuff. And those guys know what they're doing. Very cool. Well, I love everything you guys are doing out there. You have a really great team putting together um, your content and mm -hmm. your advertising. And I really, really appreciate what you do because education is so desperately needed and a lot of people aren't doing it. Um, you know, so it really, really needs to happen. So thank you. Um, we appreciate what you're doing. There's not a lot of brave mothers out there. You know, the, uh, there's a lot of a lot of people that are still concerned for the loss of their children. There's a lot of people that are okay. afraid. There's a lot of people that are afraid to say what they believe out loud for fear of persecution. Even though the prohibition is ending, there's, there's still that out, that stigma that has been out there. And, and so we, we feel very encouraged by you and what you do and the bravery that you have. Thank you so much. So I think that's a great place to wrap up before we finish. Is there anything um, you'd like to tell anybody? Well, just that we're a wide open company. Uh, a lot of the the things that you see on the screen are actually from feedback from viewers, just like the people watching this podcast, just like the people that go into the dispensaries. That's where our ideas come from. That's where the associations that we make with scientists come from. So we just very strongly encourage people to reach out to us. We're very friendly. Uh, and you can find us on the web. And if you've got some ideas or suggestions, give us a ring. That's awesome. And what is what's the URL? GetEnlightened.io. GetEnlightened.io. Yes, ma'am. Okay, awesome. And then I will put it up at the bottom of the screen and also in the comments. Um, and I will uh, connect with your, your social media channels as well. Excellent. Thank you so All much, right. Jessica. Thank you so much, Jeremy. I really appreciate it. Talk soon. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>